for the battle, I was placed into a reconnoitering party. I was a spotter on a Type 97 bomber. On November 26th, the same day Secretary of State Cordell Hull presents the final U.S. demand that the Japanese abandon their stakes in China and Southeast Asia, the strike force heads for Pearl Harbor. At sea, there was no more sake to be served until we returned to Japan, if we returned. The weather was very bad. The seas were high and rough. Some men were swept overboard when our ships were refueling from the tankers. At this stage of the operation, the Japanese are moving on speculation. There is still a chance the attack will be called off if a negotiated settlement is reached. But the ships brave the rough seas to get to their launch point. Meanwhile, the U.S. Pacific Fleet follows schedules as usual. The regular routine at that time was the Pacific Fleet would be basically divided up into two task groups. And one task group would be out for approximately two weeks drilling, come back in for refueling, replenishing stores, so forth, while the other group went out. On December 2nd, the Japanese Naval Armada receives a coded message from Admiral Yamamoto. It says, climb Mount Niataka. This is the signal to proceed with the attack. The ships move to a condition of readiness. This is what all of the airmen have been waiting for. The Japanese are disciplined and dedicated to the attack. Now that the command has been given, the future of the empire rests in the hands of these young flyers, most not even 20. By December 4th, the task force is 900 miles north of Midway. It heads to the launch point, which is a two-hour flight from Oahu. The attack is finalized for sunrise on Sunday, December 7th. Meanwhile, advanced subs continue to patrol the waters off Hawaii. Our last time out at sea and maneuvers, we took turns standing watches up on the anti-aircraft guns, which would also be used for submarine defense if they were needed. One of the other gun crews spotted Periscope, and they reported it. And instead of saying, load and ready to fire, we made full speed out of the area. The United States doesn't want to be accused of starting the war. The strike force is under orders to sink on sight any American, British, or Dutch ship and aboard any neutrals to prevent radio transmission. If it's detected, all the surprise is lost. But heavy weather and a rarely used shipping lane have paid off. The fleet arrives undetected. Early in the morning of December 7th, the Japanese convoy reaches its launch point, 275 miles north of Pearl Harbor. I said a prayer and hoped that my family would be proud of me this day. A special message came to us from Admiral Yamamoto. The rise or fall of our empire depends on the outcome of this battle. Each man will complete his duty until his flesh is crushed and his bones become powder. The message makes me feel very strong in my heart. The attack will come in two waves. In the first, bombers will fly low over the water and drop their torpedoes, which have been specially designed for the shallow harbor. The high-level bombers will then drop bombs on the ships inaccessible to torpedoes. The second wave will destroy whatever targets of opportunity are left. I sat in my plane ready to go. I was happy and anxious to attack. I trained very hard for this moment. Everywhere men were cheering us and waving their caps.
the first wave is off the deck before dawn. Pearl Harbor is now just two hours away. For the Japanese approaching Pearl Harbor, there is one note of disappointment. We got a report that there are no enemy aircraft carriers at Pearl Harbor. If I cannot get a carrier, I intend to get the battleship. My torpedo will not be wasted. Our plan to attack has been reviewed many times. If we achieve surprise, the torpedo bombers will go in first. Because it is Sunday, there are no American surveillance planes in the air, and the Japanese easily make their way to the island of Oahu. 7.55 a.m., December 7th, 1941. It's another relaxed, beautiful day in paradise. Nobody on the island of Oahu expects or is ready for what will follow. The first messages are sent to the mainland that Pearl Harbor is under attack. Dive bombers swoop in to strafe and bomb the planes parked tightly together at Hickam and Wheeler Fields, at the Kaneohe Naval Base, and the Marines Eva Field. I saw Pearl Harbor. It was spread out like a picture. No guns were firing in our direction. 